We welcome you to this uh, recording to enjoy God's word. We thank you for the word of God that God has given us, the book of Revelation, which has a special blessing for each one of us. In the first chapter of the book of Revelation, in the third verse it says, Blessed are those that read this word, and blessed are they that keep what has been written in it. The reading of the word of the book of Revelation is a special blessing for God's children. And I call it, it's like for free. Just open the book and read it and there is a special blessing for you. <clears throat> so thank God for the precious word of God. And what I want to take your attention to this evening, I was reading a portion of scripture from the book of Revelation, chapter 4, verses 4 to 6 to 8. And from that I was just meditating and uh, what the Lord was going to speak to us from this verse. So we will just read that portion of scripture. Revelation chapter 4, verses 6 to 8. Revelation chapter 4, verses 6 to 8. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second one beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the fourth beast had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank, thank the Lord for the reading of His precious word. As we have seen in the book of Revelation chapter 4, we are reading from verses 6 to 8. And it says here, Before the throne there was a sea of glass like crystal, and in the midst of the throne... I, I want you to pay attention to that sentence. In the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures. And then around the throne, it says that there were 24 elders. We know that the 24 elders, 12 are from the tribe of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel, and the other 12 are the disciples of Jesus Christ or apostles of Jesus Christ. So these 24 are accounted for. But these four living creatures, I was wondering who could it be? What could it be? And I heard some preacher saying that they are cherubims or cerebims. These four living creatures. And they are given the features of these living creatures. They said the face of one is like a lion. The face of the second is like a calf. The face of the third is like a man. And the fourth is like a flying eagle. So these four features of these four living creatures and then we see that it's sitting in the midst of the throne in the midst of the throne in the fifth chapter it says in the sixth verse and I looked and behold in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb that means right in the midst of the throne or on the throne were these four living creatures also and the Lamb of God, whom we know is Jesus, there can be no, no second person compared to him. There's no second thought about that. Jesus is the Lamb of God who sits in the midst of the throne. And it, it tells us in another verse, in chapter 3, when the Lord Jesus was talking to his seven churches, the last church is the church of Laodicea. And right in the last verse it says, in the 21st verse, it says to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me in my throne on my throne. The church is talking to the church, Jesus, to the Laodicean church, the last church, or the church of the last age. And Jesus, while talking, he says, Those that overcome, those that keep on until the end, faithful, he says, I will make them to sit with me in the midst of the throne. On my throne. And these, these four living creatures are there on the throne. So I was thinking, who could these be on the throne? It's, Jesus is talking in the third chapter to the Laodicean church. Then somebody told me that cerebims and cherubims. Then I went on studying this chapter. 
I kept on studying about these four living creatures. And when I came to the fifth chapter, it says here that Jesus was the only one worthy in heaven or on earth to open the seal of the book that was in the hand of God. God was offering a book to be opened which had seven seals on it and no creature was found worthy to take that book and open it. Nobody was found worthy. Nobody in heaven, nobody on earth. And then while John was, was really worried, while he was weeping, what is happening? No one can take that book. Then a lamb came forth and that lamb is Jesus. The lamb came and took the book from the hand of God and it says here that he was found worthy because he laid down his life from the foundation of the world. Therefore, he was found worthy to take that book from the hand of God and to open the seals. And in that same portion, when he took that book, immediately we see that the four living creatures and the 24 elders, they fell down before the throne and before the Lamb of God and they began to worship the Lord. And that is what I want to point out to you. The song that these 24 elders and the four creatures they sang, that song I want to put before you, which is found in the fifth chapter and from the ninth verse onwards. It says, and they sang a song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll. They're telling Jesus that you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood redeemed us to God by your blood. That is the point I like to make there. Redeemed us. The four creatures are saying this. The 24 elders are also singing this song. You have redeemed us to God through your blood. When he says through your blood, I know that Jesus Christ came to this earth not to die for angels, not to die for any creature on this earth, not to die for the fishes or the animals, but to give his life for, the, for mankind. For man had fallen into sin and Jesus Christ came to this earth to redeem mankind from his sins. He shed his precious blood to redeem man. So it, I settled it in my mind <clears throat> that these four living creatures, that they are none others than four living human beings, believers, born again Christians, those that have been filled with the spirit of the living God, the spirit of Jesus. These are the four that have been given permission to sit with Jesus in the midst of the throne, like how he said in the third chapter of the book, of the book that he spoke to the Laodicean church. The same portion, I will allow them or I will make them to sit with me on my throne. And here we see that these four living creatures are on the throne with Jesus. And while we are seeing this, they say, you have redeemed us to God through your precious blood. So this confirms me in my mind that these four living creatures are human beings. So I made a calculation, rough calculation, and I understand that these are the characteristics of a born-again believer. These four characteristics, lion-like, like a calf, like a human being, and like a flying eagle. These four characteristics we find or should find or must find in a true born-again believer. A true born-again believer who has been washed in the blood of Jesus, who has been filled with the Holy Spirit, who has the gifts of the Holy Spirit, who has all the power of the Spirit of God working through them, every born-again believer has a right to all these gifts of the Holy Spirit. So therefore, when we accept Jesus as Lord, when we receive Jesus into our hearts, when we are washed in His blood, when we are filled with His Holy Spirit, then these four characteristics must be in us. We as human beings, as believers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the first creature that we see, it was a lion. And we know that the lion is the king of the beasts. Peter says that the enemy, the devil, is like a roaring lion going around to see whom he will devour. Like a roaring lion, not a roaring lion, but like a roaring lion. Only we are like a lion. Only there is one lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah. In the fifth chapter, it tells us here, he is the lion of the tribe of Judah, that is Jesus. And because we are the children of God, because we are the children of Jesus, we are also lions. 
So a born again believer is like a lion on this earth. <clears throat> he has nothing to fear. He is king of the beast. He is like the, like the king of the beast. And the Bible says, the righteous are as bold as a lion. Hallelujah. A believer must be as bold as a lion. He has nothing to fear. Let hundred kinds of coronavirus come on this earth. Let hundred, hundred types of demon possessed people be. Let there be hundred types of pollution. Let there be diseases. Let there be any kind of tragedy, natural disaster upon the earth. The righteous will stand as bold as a lion. Nothing to fear. Hallelujah. Because we are children of the most high God. Horses, horses uh, babies are called horses. A tiger's baby is tiger. A dog's baby is dog. It becomes a dog. So a lion's baby must become lions also. Since we belong to Jesus, we are also lions. We are ruling upon this earth. We are as kings. We have a kingship. That is why it says in Peter that we are a royal priesthood, a called out people. We are of a kingly line and therefore we are like the lion, as bold as lion. Praise the Lord. The second point I want to go because I have very short time. The second point talks about a calf. It has the characteristic of a calf. The calf is a supreme sacrifice that only a believer can make. A born again believer really can make a sacrifice. We have, we have many people that are in problems upon this earth. We have people who are in need. We have natural disasters, calamities. We have diseases. We have many orphans on this earth. We have old people on this earth. And we see that all these things, most of it is taken care of by Christians. It says that 65% of the wealth on this earth belong to Christians. Hallelujah. Because we are children of the King of Kings. And because we are children of the King of Kings, He has given us wealth. He says He takes the wealth of the heathen and gives it to the believer. Hallelujah. Therefore, we, are, we as believers, we are never in want. We always have surplus. We always have to give because we are children of the King of Kings. You, you could ever imagine a child of a king asking for bread, a child of a king without home, without, without clothes, without food, without shelter, the child of a king. No, we have. And because we have, we can give. And God has told Abraham in the 12th chapter, I will make you a blessing to be a blessing to others. I will bless you to bless others. And that is what God has given us. We as believers, we are blessed beyond measure and we are able to give. That is why orphanages are supported by Christians. In national calamities like World Vision and other organizations, Christian organizations, they are the first to reach out with help, with aid. Because we are a blessed people. We make the sacrifice. The calf or the cow is the biggest sacrifice that man can offer. Amen. So this is the sacrifice that uh, Abraham also offered to God. We see here in the book of uh, Genesis chapter 18, in the 8th verse we see that when God came to the house of Abraham, Abraham was overjoyed to have such a royal guest in his house. God with two angels visiting his house. So he was overjoyed. And when God came there, he was going to Sodom and Gomorrah to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. So when they came by, Abraham says, If I have found favor in your sight, please stay here till I bring something for you to have, something to eat. And we see that Abraham was very happy and he had three royal guests. When you have a royal guest coming to your home, when you have somebody very special coming to your home, what do you prepare and give them? You give them your best. Our best here in our locality is mutton curry. Chungri curry, fish curry, we make something special and uh, normally it's biryani. So we make this special because we have a special guest. So Abraham in, that, in those days, he had a special guest and it was God. What did Abraham give God to eat? It says he went there and got bread ready and he got a fatted calf ready. A fatted calf ready and he prepared it. Maybe he made curry or something or roast or something. He prepared it and brought and put it before God and God ate. He gave his best for God. 
What was his best? A calf. A calf is the best meal that we could offer to a, a special guest. So therefore, it says here the calf. First is the lion. A lion, as bold as a lion. We are king of this earth. And the second is the calf. Supreme sacrifice. The best gift, the best sacrifice that we can give is only a born again believer can do. The third thing that we see here was a man, the face of a man. Man we know is the king of creation. First we have the king of the beasts, then the king of the sacrifice. The third we have the king of creation. When God created the sun and the moon and everything upon this earth, when everything was done, then God said, let us make man in our own image and our own likeness to have dominion over the works of the hand. Dominion upon the earth. That means God created man special. And therefore he is the king of creation. And because he is the king of creation, God had given him dominion over this whole earth. And that is what a born again believer is supposed to do. We are supposed to have dominion on this earth. We are under nobody. We are under nobody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And here in the 18th chapter of Luke we see, uh, sorry, in the 10th chapter of Luke we see, in the 19th verse, Jesus tells his disciples, Behold, I give you authority over all the works of the enemy. You will trample upon the serpent. You will trample upon the scorpion. Nothing can harm you. I have given you authority over all the works of the enemy. All the power of the enemy is under our authority. Therefore, we reign, we rule. And that is what a born-again believer is supposed to be. When we stand up, the enemy has to tremble. And that is exactly what happens. If you are a born-again believer, if you are a spiritual believer, you know what I am talking about. Whenever we stand before a demon-possessed person, that person trembles. And we say, in the name of Jesus, and the demon flees away because we are the king of creation. We have dominion on this earth. Jesus has given us authority as man upon this earth. As man upon this earth, we have authority to rule over everything on this earth, including the enemy, including sickness, including everything that is upon this earth. When we stand up, everything must bow before us because we have dominion. Hallelujah. The king of creation is man. So this is the fourth thing that I see. I want to point out to you. The king of creation, man, he has dominion upon everything. Nothing to fear. Nothing to fear. When, when the enemy comes against us, we stand as a lion. We stand as a lion in boldness. And we stand as man to have, who has dominion, as kingship, as royalty. We stand against the enemy and he flees from us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, commit your ways unto the Lord. And stand against the enemy and he'll flee from you. He'll fly, run from you. Because we have authority, he runs from us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We see one more thing here. The flying eagle. The fourth characteristic of a believer is a flying eagle. An eagle is something very special that you will find only in spiritual believers. A spiritual believer only knows how to fly in the time of a storm. When there is a storm raging, all other birds, birds will run for shelter. Every bird, every kind of bird, they run for shelter and they are hiding in the corner. Only the eagle is the only bird that stretches out his wings, makes a big noise standing on the rock on the mountain. When it sees the wind coming, the strong wind, the storm, he says, here there is current, special current for me to fly higher. An eagle always wants to fly higher. A spiritual believer always wants to go higher, not lower. A, a believer that is just namesake, they are satisfied with everything on the ground. They are like birds on the ground. Everything is okay. Everything is okay. They compromise with everything. Everything they compromise. All gods are alike. Do what you like. Some, some of them even say, you drink smoke and go to, he go to heaven also. So far they say. But a spiritual believer knows that he has to keep his vessel clean 
and he needs to walk with the Lord daily. When the storm comes, when all other birds are hiding, all these uh, namesake Christians are hiding, then the eagle, the spiritual believer, goes higher and higher. He flies higher and higher. He wants to fly higher. And when he goes up, it says that the eagle has double eyelids. Double eyelids. And when he goes high up, he closes eyelids and he looks into the sun. That is, that is his intention, to fly high and to look into the sun. This eagle that is upon the earth, it looks into this S-U-N sun. But we flying believers, spiritual believers, when we fly high, we look into the face of S-O-N sun. That is our Jesus Christ. It's only when we go higher in our spiritual life, and that is only by the Spirit of God, then you can look into the face of the Son of God. Hallelujah. You can have that communion. And that is what Jesus wants. He wants us to have communion with Him. Communion with Him. The closer we can get to Him. He wants us to get closer and closer to Him. And it's only by the Spirit that we can get closer to Jesus. Here on earth, having dominion here on earth, and here on earth only, we can have that close communion with Jesus. And we could have that fellowship with Him. He wants it with us. He wants to be with us. And He wants us to lift us up higher and higher. Hallelujah. The wonderful characteristics of, a, of an eagle, it's so wonderful about the eagle. There's so many things that you can learn from an eagle. And that is what a spiritual believer is. He always wants to learn something. The eagle always has something to teach us. He always has special revelation. Because he is not on the earthly level with other birds. He is always high above. And when you go up above, there are so many things that the Lord wants to show you that you cannot see from this level. And that is why in the fourth chapter of Revelation it says that John looked and when he saw the door open in heaven, he heard a voice saying unto him, that was sounding like a trumpet, come up here, come up here. And I will show you things. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus is telling John, come up here. We need to go higher. When we go higher, then we can see things which we cannot see from the lower level. When we are on the lookout for something, we always go on a higher plane so that we could see further out. Normally when we go on a high mountain, we can see better. So Jesus also wants us to come up on that mountain. He says, come up here and I will show you things to come. Things that are going to happen, which on the normal level, we cannot see. This is all spiritual things that I am telling you. These four living, living creatures has the characteristics of a born again, spiritual believer, which you and myself must have. Sometimes we are so fearful what is happening. What is happening upon the earth? This one is affected. That one is affected with coronavirus. The market is collapsing. All things are happening. But a believer has nothing to worry. My God is my supply. He has blessed my, my bread and my water. My going out and my coming in has been blessed by Him. He says, a thousand will fall at your side and ten thousand at your right side. Not one will come nigh unto you. These words become alive to us only when we have that communion with the Lord Jesus Christ. When we go up higher, when we fly like the eagle in the spirit, when we begin speaking in tongues and God gives us revelation through his word, then we begin to have a closer communion with the Lord Jesus Christ. It says one more thing about these four creatures that they had six wings and they had eyes right around. I think on the wings also there were eyes. There were eyes on the back and there were eyes in the front. What does these eyes teach us? These eyes show us that they had special revelation, special insight which other believers cannot see. Eyes all over means can see all over. They can see things that others cannot see. When you are a spiritual believer, when you are in the spirit with communion with the Lord Jesus, He shows you things which a normal believer cannot see. My friend, these four characteristics must be in you and me. If you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, don't settle for less. Let your 
let your eyes be upon him let it be more lord with you more of jesus let us draw closer unto him let us have a closer walk with him let us go nearer to him because he wants to show us things that others cannot see jesus had 12 disciples 12 disciples but only 3 he took on that mountain of transfiguration where he revealed his true self to those three peter john and james these three people went on that high mountain and he revealed himself to them others did not see they were down in the valley therefore we need to have that mountain experience with the lord jesus and this is possible here on this earth it is possible here it is for us it is for us and that is why jesus said to the church of laodicea i will make you to sit if you overcome i will make you to sit with me on my throne and that is the four living creatures they were doing they were sitting on the throne with jesus that is what my bible says and right from there they were worshiping the lord they fell on their faces and when they fell on their faces it says that the 24 elders also fell on their faces and they were worshiping worshiping the lamb they were worshiping jesus because they had that insight they had the insight of what the lord is who the lord is in the spirit with all these eyes around them that is insight into what others cannot see the apostle paul says in the spirit the lord took him up into the third heaven and he saw things which he says i cannot utter with my mouth the lord showed him certain thing that he says words cannot explain what he saw and that is what happens when we are in the spirit when we are in the spirit we have a closer walk with the lord and when we walk closer or we shall we say higher then the lord begins to reveal things to us which normally we cannot receive anywhere else praise the lord so blessed be the name of the lord that has given us this word so that we could study from the word of god what the lord has in store for us he has all these beautiful things in the book of corinthians first corinthians in the 13th chapter the 14th chapter and the 12th chapter he tells us all these gifts of the holy spirit is for us the gifts of prophecy the gift of knowledge the gift of wisdom it also it is gift given by the lord jesus christ not to the people of the earth because jesus says they don't know the holy spirit they can't receive but we as believers we can receive all these gifts it is for us and when we receive we can have all the insight like how these four living creatures had they had insight into everything they had eyes right around them they were bold as lions they could give the best gift of sacrifice they have dominion over every situation upon the earth and they and in the time of trouble they always stretch their wings and they are ready to fly i think the day for us to really fly is coming near after this lockdown and all that is happening on the earth it looks like the time for every believer to fly every born again believer to fly the time has come we need to get a little bit used to flying now so when the lord comes in the mid there and when the trumpet sounds according to the word of god we will all be caught up with the lord and we will go home to be with him we we have to be flying eagles right now we have to learn flying right now to fly with the lord on that day amen may god bless us through his precious word this evening i believe you are all blessed to this little uh, talk that we had from the word of god and we believe that this word will work in your heart and you will strive to be something better than what normally believers are don't settle for less again i tell you don't settle for less be something special what the lord wants you to be god intends that every believer should be like these four living creatures with all these characteristics to live here on the earth as overcomers that when he comes he will take us home and then we will have be separated from all the problems here until then i my prayer is that each one of you will be under the blood filled with the holy spirit ready to do exploit in the name of jesus overcomers in everything bold as a lion ready to meet the lord in the air until then may the lord bless each one of you god bless